Assalatu wassalamu alayki ya Rasulullah. Assalatu wassalamu alayki ya Habibullah. Assalatu wassalamu alayki ya Sayyid al-Awaleen wal-Akhirin. Wassalamu ala al-Mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Amin, amin, amin. Let's begin with a salawat from the our green book. And um, I'd like to read from one of the beautiful salawats of Sheikh Noor, um, which is, maybe I'll, I'll read even just a portion of it. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, uh, not finding it, it's in the atom, and we had put it in the green book, but I'm not sure where it is. Um, well, I'll read this one. This is this is beautiful too. This is Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. O oh Allah, please shower your blessings upon our Master Muhammad, Bari and Warika, the ocean of your lights, wa Madini Asrarika, the mine of your secrets, wa Lisani Hujatuka, the tongue of your proof, wa Arusi Mamlakatika, the bridegroom of your sovereignty, wa Imami Hazratika, the Imam of your presence, wa Tirazi Mulkika, the embroidery of your empire. Wa hazaini rahmetika, the treasury of your mercy, the way of your sharia who delights in your unity, pupil of the eye of being, the reason for everything brought into being, essence of all essences of creation, dispatched from the light of your radiance, shower your blessings upon him as long as your eternity lasts, as long as your subsistence subsists, never ceasing without your knowledge, as pleases you and him, and which makes us pleasing to you, O cherisher and sustainer of all the worlds. This is from the Dalai Haida, Signs of the Treasures, compiled by Saint of the Shazalia Tariqa Muhammad Suleiman al-Jazuli. May his secret be sanctified. So in the, in the last line, as pleases you, salat and turdike wa turdihi, and him, and which makes us pleasing to you. Wa tada biha enne ya rabbi alalimin, O cherisher and sustainer of all the worlds. So uh, today I'd like to talk about the soul. And um, in this time after Ramadan, we're some of us might feel a little bit like a floundering fish. You know, we've been in the ocean of the, of the, of the mercy of, of, of Allah in the Ramadan, and now we're back on the shore, and, um, and yet, you know, we're maybe uh, we feel a little bit lost. But so what, what do we do at this time? How can we proceed? Um, so what came to me is service, serving, is a very, um, a good, a, a great station, it's, it's who we are. And a, as a, a more general uh, direction is caretaking of our soul. So the, in the Ramadan, we're uplifted, we're just naturally buoyant, our soul is, uh, feels full of light. And yes, we have to make an effort in with the fast or the prayers or the the, the lack of sleep, but um, the the state we receive and the the reward we receive is so much greater that um, it's you know we we bear it like a, a light load we would bear and and alhamdulillah. So caretaking of the soul. Our, I would like to read from Sheikh Noor, a sentence on the soul that he gave in an interview. 
uh, and which was placed in a book called American Jihad. And uh, it, these are a series of essays. And so he opens his interview by saying, the soul in Islam doesn't just suddenly spring into being at the time of birth. It exists from pre-eternity. It contains all of the knowledge of the ages. It contains all of the knowledge of the ages. And only a small part of this knowledge is Allah going to allow it to manifest in a given lifetime. Mashallah. The soul is this way whether it consciously embraces Islam or not. And some souls have the destiny and the divine permission to embrace historical Islam. Others have the permission to embrace others of the great noble tradition. Um, there's not a single soul that doesn't come from Allah and that isn't bearing all this richness and pre-knowledge that is given to the soul as the crown of creation. So, mashallah, uh, what a responsibility uh, to be blessed with, with this soul. And we are the caretakers. Somehow the, we are both it and also the caretakers of it, or our higher self is the caretaker of our more a less mature self, you might say. And, um, and the soul in Islam, or in, in, in Sufi mystical tradition, is said to have seven levels. And, and therefore, um, it goes from a, a very earthly survival level to the most exalted level and complete um, bakabila, to complete subsistence uh, in Allah, living... Uh, existing through Allah, with Allah, through Allah. Sheikh Musafir has them in adornment of hearts. He lists them, and I'll mention them to you. So the, the first level of self is the domineering self, nafsil amara. It's the, uh, Sheikh Noor calls it the, the survival self, and I like that understanding because it was given for a purpose, which is also to uh, to to protect us, to be almost its selfish nature is is uh, is what uh, makes it self protective, of course, and self serving. So self serving at a certain level is necessary, but uh, we can't allow it to dominate. So in the the interaction of the levels of the soul, you can see it's all one soul. And just to even consider the, what Noor pointed to is immense, that, uh, what he said about the soul. So it's, it's vast, it's ancient, and um, it's, it's pre-eternal. And I'm going to read again that the one sentence. Um, it exists from pre-eternity. It contains all of the knowledge of the ages. Contains all of the knowledge of the ages. So uh, it's awesome. The human soul is awesome. And it's from the breath of Allah, who taught Allah. So it says that Allah breathed uh, the breath, his own breath, into Adam, alayhi salam, into the the amazing uh, form of Adam, and then asked the angels immediately to bow down. And so it's, it's that soul, it's that breath that makes it the crown of creation, that makes humanity uh, receive the amana. You could say that the amana came into humanity by its very nature uh, with the breath of Allah. And, and so, in a sense, our soul, our own soul, is our amana, and that's what we have to care for. So, um, and it's, as I said, it's, it, it is, on one hand, it could be like caring for a child. Sometimes it's like caring for maybe a crazy person. Sometimes when it, if it goes really off, if we, you know, are, are, are not careful, and, and it kind of gets away with us, it can become uh, deranged or at least sick, sick. And we all, we all are sick. I mean, humanity, 
we're all sick in the sense that if we've lost the the bond, the conscious bond on our side, there's all, the bond is always there. But to our beloved, then we we are ill. We're wandering about. We don't know who we are, and we <clears throat> try out various roles of life and uh, or for ourself, personality and uh, visioning ourself. But uh, we remain ill until we uh, until we truly find God in ourself, and so that's the that usually comes with the hand taking itself. Not that we'll have a full experience, but maybe even a drop, just a, a taste. But that taste and that drop is sufficient to. Uh, orient us. Now we are oriented toward the truth, oriented toward love, or on the way of love, toward the beloved. And, um, and of course, then we proceed. And the more we proceed, whatever uh, image one has of it, uh, the, the more we are imbued. And, and, and the more our soul, you might say, the more we rise or our awareness, consciousness rises to the more expanded and luminous parts of our soul. So, <clears throat> and um, in, in, in that regard, um, for caretaking the soul, in, in Quran, there's also a beautiful passage in Shems, Surah Shems 91, by the soul and the order and proportion given to it. So here already we're told that it has in, in, in pre-eternally a, a, a beautiful proportion and, and order and structure. And its enlightenment adds to its wrong and its right. Truly the one who succeeds who purifies it and fails who corrupts it. Or who allows it, let's say, just not to develop. Wanefsin wama sawaha falhamaha fujuraha watakwaha. And some translate that, and, and he instilled it. So by the soul and its, its beautiful proportion, its beautiful nature, let's say, um, and uh, its enlightenment, valhamaha, fujaraha, watakwaha, as to its wrong and its right. So it already comes into the world with I I innate knowledge and um, with a, a light of guidance already in it. And so the one who follows that and um, and and increases that then is. Uh, successful and, and felicitous already in this world. And then uh, by ignoring it, we become unhappy. And we know because we've all tasted that and we know that even we can fall back. It's not that we're, you know, just because we made one step that we're necessarily uh, already there. There is a, a continuing stepping, a continuing unfolding and process and struggle. Uh, and so now, after Ramadan, in a sense, we enter the different struggle. Uh, and um, so let's envision it as, as um, you know, struggling for our soul, caretaking our soul in this time. So I'll go on uh, reading the the domineering self, that's one, the censorious self, so nasalawama, so that's the, when we remonstrate, when we argue, when we try to pull our, our soul, you know, toward, toward the light, but fall back, but then see its faults, and uh, we are self, um, you might say, critiquing. Then the inspired self, and so in the tariqa, and this is the brilliance of Tadika, is that we are given medicine for the soul. We are given food for the soul, nourishment. And um, just this morning, in the morning, we were, we were, we read, we went back to read, you know, all the things that we asked for. What oh, and and fulfill me, feed me 
with, uh, you know, it has a whole list of things, uh, feed me with all of these different aspects and, and states. So we feed it in, in, with the divine names, for one. And so Lai La Illa La is the, uh, it says the medicine for the first, that's why it's called a sword for the state, the, the lowest level, the, uh, the, the most, you might say, difficult level. Uh, and intransigent, and, but yet the sword of Lai Lai La La, sword of light, um, will uh, make the one victorious who plunges into Lai Lai La La, not only reciting but also contemplating it. And so many of the, you know, the mystic teachings in Sufism are uh, centered on that, on, 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 on the oneness of, of reality, on, on the uh, all-pervading presence of reality, on the, uh, on the non-existence of anything that is other than that reality. So, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And the, the, the medicine, the name for the level two to bring us, uh, you know, beyond level two is Allah. So we, this la ilaha illallah, Allah. And then we come to the inspiring self, which is the um, nafsil, uh, the um, mulhima, mulhima. So it's, it's the, the, the where that receives, it's cleared some of its most, um, you might say, uh, light blocking burdens. And, and therefore it becomes open, it becomes more permeable. The soul at this point is more permeable to the divine light, to divine inspiration. And uh, Sheikh Musafir mentions eight properties of the inspiring self, knowledge, humility, repentance, patience, gratitude, generosity, contentment, fortitude perseverance in the face of adversity. So that's, uh, and of course, all of these qualities will continue through, through them all, but this is maybe where they become more, more visible, more present in ourself. And the fourth level is the nafsul uh, mutmaina. And here I'm going to read you the, the beautiful uh, ayat on nafsul on mutmaina. And it's translation by Sheikh Noor. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. From Surah Fajr, Al-Fajr. To the sanctified soul, Allah Most High communicates intimately. My beloved soul, who has attained perfect peace and conscious fullness, return now mystically into your Lord joining your spiritual delight with my infinite divine delight. Enter now into the circle of my most exalted lovers. Enter now into the paradise of my very essence. Ya ayatuha nafsul mutmaine irji illa rabike radiatam mardia fadhuli fi ibadi wadhuli jannati. Alhamdulillah. So this is, you know, this is, the soul longs to hear this. So the, the soul longs, as, especially as it lifts itself up. It's almost like a, a giant bird. I saw an image recently of a gigantic bird of prey that had dived into the ocean to catch a prey, a fish. And then the, you know, the effort it takes to, to lift itself out, the water is weighing it down, its wings. And so, so you, you see the head of the bird emerge and then you see the wings start to lift up from the water surface and the drops of water falling down where it's really between water and air. But the, this bird makes this tremendous effort to lift itself into the air and then it starts flying and it takes off. So uh, that's, I would say that's really, you know, the third and fourth level where the soul starts to rise. And at this point, Sheikh Musafir said that from the fourth level on, it's really Allah who pulls the soul. So our own efforts, yes, 
uh, our own efforts are there. We have to, you know, let's say in the case of dervishes, uh, continue walking the path, offering tesbi, offering salat, uh, fasting uh, in the Ramadan, or, you know, all of these things that are recommended. They're all for purifying the soul. Uh, they're for us, all given to us as different means of of helping the soul lift out of the the gravity of uh, you know um, of the of the earth into the into the the sky of of Allah. Of course, the earth is also Allah's, and so it's all of course designed for the soul, the journey, the difficulty, the resistance, the, the ignorance, it's all, it's amazing how it's all part of this divine drama of love, this cosmic drama uh, that is so amazing, but we can't taste how amazing it is until we somehow start to lift out of, uh, you know, the, the, with the more veiling levels, the heavy levels. So, um, So let's continue. So, and, and, and that passage that we just read of Sheikh Noor uh, from Quran, O soul, o, o sanctified soul, my beloved soul, who has attained perfect peace and conscious fullness. So this is Noor's um, rendering of Mutmaina and in, in Sheikh Musafir. So that's the, the, the fourth level, the tranquil self. And uh, Sheikh Musafir says, action, the seven, seven attributes of those who attain this level are action based on sincerity. So that everything we do, or mostly everything uh, we do is, is, is sincere. In other words, it's to, for the good and, um, and it, it um, expresses uh, the truth of our heart. Complete trust in the Lord, so tawakul, ta complete trust in the Lord. Pure joy on fourth level, so has the ra radia, has the joy. Austerities, meaning that we take on, um, you know, such as fasting, or such as uh, the prayers, can't really be considered austere, but sometimes the time in which they occur is. Worship, in other words, there's a, a natural desire now that appears in the soul to worship, to adore, to, to offer itself. And that's part of a, a sacrifice, it's a way of worship. It's giving ourselves back to Allah. Uh, gratitude. So gratitude, you see, was also on the third level. So, it, but as I said, they they continue. Of course, these great qualities, gratitude and contentment. Contentment was also in the third level. Um, so, with the gracious help of Allah, the All Glorious, even this level can be transcended. So, this is through Haq, the Esmal Haq. So we have La ilaha illallah, Allah, who. Uh, oh, I don't think we mentioned that. Who is uh, for the th to bring us to the fourth, fourth level, from third to fourth? Who? So it's it, isn't it interesting that we were, these are the main names of the the zikrullah, and also of our personal tazbi, and this is what brings us to the fourth level, which is this level of the 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 fulfilled self. The and from there as we said, is a, a journey taken by Allah. It's, and sometimes we can, you know, stay a long time on a certain level. And, and we also go back and forth. It's not like we're ever clearly free. We can go back to the, the first level sometimes in our behavior. But it won't last long. It'll, it'll come and it'll flash through. So this is the nafsil... Uh, Mutmainah. And then it says, return to your Lord, Radiatan. So your Lord who is well pleased. <clears throat> Joining your spiritual delight. Oh, so this is, no, the soul has the idea, the soul. So that's why 
uh, Sheikh Musafir says the fourth level has this joy, so Radia, it's already filled. It is divine joy, that's all it is, but it's experienced as a, a personal, as a maybe intimate to the soul uh, level of joy. But as it joins with Allah's joy, uh, which is the Maria. Uh, so let's go to the contented self because that's where the idea is. So we've gone Mutmaine, level four. The soul is called by Allah, right? And that exactly confirms what Effendi said, that at the fourth level, if we reach this level, Allah will call us because Allah now, the this action of desire, divine desire uh, moves in. To our soul, so Allah desires the soul, the the one that is in the state of of peace and and contentment, and and has made some of the more difficult journey already. And um, and then we can taste as Allah calls us. Well, please, then we can taste uh, this level of radia where we start to feel Allah's uh, pleasure but it's still felt as our own. And this is the uh, nafsil radia. Sincerity, renunciation of all that serves, uh, that does not serve a good purpose. So it's not complete renunciation. It's just renunciation of what <clears throat> is not useful to the soul any longer at this level. Um, so uh, remembrance, Abstinence, again, you know, we bring in those aspects of the, of the practice that would restrain the aspects of the lower self and uh, more guide them instead of, ex it's not obliterating, extinguishing them, it's just uh, guiding them. Like when, as we exited Ramadan, or as the, the next month uh, came in, I immediately felt, you know, I, it, almost my prayer was, oh, Allah, do not let my belly lead me, you know, because going into the room, I was very conscious, you know, of that oh, food here, food there. Food is so available to us here in America, in the West. I mean, we're so blessed with the ability to have access to food, and many people in the world don't. So... Um, but not to abuse that, we have to be careful not to abuse that and to be conscious of that, uh, conscious of our eating and um, to eat halal food, you know, so halal, what is halal? Halal is what is grown with love, if possible. If not, we say bismillah rahman rahim over it. We transform it into halal through our own... Uh, awareness and, and relation and gratitude to the food, gratitude to Allah, gratitude to the one who grew it, uh, gratitude to the very nature of the food itself, uh, makes it halal and realizing where it comes from and what its purpose is also. So we, by that, by the bismillahirrahmanirrahim rahim that we say over the food is before we eat, is also, it will, it's almost like a baptism, let's say, to use our uh, that word, it bat kind of baptizes the food so that the food itself will uh, serve a good purpose, you know. So when we eat unconsciously, uh, you know, like this and that, and just n not at all with any uh, ceremony of, of gratitude, uh, then um, that food can potentially also serve heedlessness, serve, uh, you know, unawareness. So very important to be, con eating is a prayer, and, and to be conscious of that. So uh, restraint, we, so that was all in the category of, of restraint, but really gratitude and, and, and devotion and sacredness, seeing our life as a sacred life, as a sacred act. Um, miraculous powers, okay, level five, so that everyone's attracted to miraculous powers, and many are, but um, we're told not to pay too much attention to them. And austerity, so that's the idea, because we're so filled also 
with, 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 with joy. Uh, and we know that, and it can be sparked back. We might be, you know, in our day go about, we might have troubles, but there's something that is not um, affected within ourselves. So we've reached that place in, in the fifth level that is not affected even by the outer drama, even by our own, particularly outer drama. So that is the soul at the level of radia. And but it's very interesting. Irji illa rabiki radiatan mardia. So the two are put together. So the soul's pleasure and Allah's pleasure. Radiatan mardiatan. So they're really shared. It's it's one. It's just a transitioning into a more and more powerful uh, um, level of of divine. Uh, presence or, or essence. So this is the sixth level that the soul attains by receiving the divine pleasure. Return unto your Lord well pleased and well pleasing unto him is, is the more, so Noor's version of that, joining your spiritual delight with my infinite divine delight. And then Allah says, Enter now into the circle of my most exalted lover. So that's paradise. Enter now into the paradise of my very essence. Alhamdulillah. So six attributes of this level of the pleasing self, Mardiya, it says also where the soul is pleasing to Allah. Renunciation of all but Allah. So what does that mean? That means that everything has become Allah for us. That you know, and it's like Abu Bakr Siddiq said, uh, "Peace be upon him." Said, "Before I see something, I see Allah." So it's 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 kind of that station that we are moving, breathing, living through Allah, Allah, Allah. So everything the what, there is no material world anymore. It is all Allah. It is all the face and and the the the. Uh, the zahir is all the manifest of Allah. Kindness toward Allah's creatures. Kindness towards Allah's creatures. Interesting that that comes in at the six. I mean, of course, that can go way. Kindness toward Allah's creatures should already come very early on, but uh, maybe it's a, it's a you know, it's. Um, Maybe this is its true level or where this kindness is coming from, the kindness that we feel toward others and toward uh, human beings and toward maybe who, who are in need and toward you know, creatures of all kind comes from that divine pleasure. And that's where it makes us want to be kind. It just flows from those. So there's not even... A, a, a volition behind it. No, it doesn't need volition, like to remember. Oh, I have to be kind to you know. No, it just at this point is flowing out. Closeness to Allah, mashallah, and that's where all these divine attributes are coming from through the closeness. Contemplation of the works of Allah. So tefakur, contemplation, at this level. So this is where the mind is occupied no longer with judging and criticizing and uh, taking things apart or, you know, it's, it's found its true purpose. The mind has found its true purpose, of course, to help us survive, but to contemplate, to be in awe, to be bewildered by the gloriousness of Allah, by the the mystery of Allah, by the beauty of Allah, and to contemplate all of this, alhamdulillah. And contentment with a lot apportioned by Allah. Oh, that's, that takes a high level, <laughs> as we know. Um, intimate and true knowledge of Allah the exalted. So, you know, there's much to say, of course, also contentment with a lot apportioned by Allah. Um, does it mean that we don't strive to better our life? No. But uh, it means that at every, even if we strive, and we, sh we should strive, we strive for ourselves, to feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, try for our family, that we give them 
whatever we can bring to them, whether, you know, wife or husband, um, uh, and or child with an elder parent, we strive. But, uh, but you know, at each, we strive, but we are content with what the fruit is, or what Allah gives as a fruit of our striving. And knowing that all comes from Allah, and that, uh, that really we don't understand. And this is also part of the contemplation, is to contemplate that our knowledge is so small, a drop, if even that, an atom, as Effendi said, um, an atom from the ocean of divine knowledge. And um, and so that we, we don't know. And the not knowing, that's also, I think, part of this level. Really going, uh, being in the station of knowing that we don't know. And that's called the highest knowing. And that too was, uh, I think, uh, said by Abu Bakr Siddiq, that the, the real knowing is the not knowing that we don't know. Um, intimate and true knowledge of Allah the exalted as he deserves to be known. So, wow, that's powerful. And, you know, so that means the why, the inspiration that Allah gives to us that at this level, um, that began already at third level with the mulhime, already the light coming into the soul, but at this level, at the fifth, uh, sixth level, a pleasing self that more will be given, and that doesn't mean that the mind can comprehend. It says, you know, no mind can, uh, no no mind can conceive, but Allah is over all conception. No grasp, no soul can grasp Allah. So it leads really to more bewilderment. So the name invoked at this level is Yakayum. Yakayum, 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 and you know we've we've uh, passed through these names in our name retreat. So you see how significant they are, also to our own development. So these, when we study names, they're not just abstractly out there, and and that's why we call for people's personal experience with the names, because uh, this is where they're important as they. Uh, affect their their power on us and um, so yaktayum and the seventh level is the pure self so uh, this you you might say is referred to fadhuli fi ibadi wadhuli jannati and and so uh, it's very interesting that this little verse has the nafsil mutmaina the fourth, the fifth, nafsil radia, the fifth, nafsil madia, the sixth, and the level of paradise, uh, pure paradise, jannat, uh, the, the seventh. And here it's called the pure self, nafsi safiya, so it's transparent self, trans completely transparent to the radiance of Allah, the, the flow, the uh, emanation of Allah. The six properties of the pure soul, divine unity, so tawhid, so that the soul is in complete unity like the diamond in water. And Fendi gave that image for the bakabila, the, the, and that's what it is at this level. So there is still, a, you might say, a self. It's not uh, a lost in fana. It, might ex it experiences fana. We can experience fana at any of these levels. But it, it, it returns to be the bakabila, which is the subsisting, living the divine life. So these are the six properties. Divine unity, tawhid. Essence. Uh, so essence, this is what Sheikh Noor was always, this was his focus, the divine essence. What's the essence from which all the attributes flow? This is the, in the ascension this is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the most exalted, intimate, the closer than two bow lengths, or even closer, al adna. Uh, this is the essence, you might say, or the closest experience of essence we can have. Praise, so that we're in a state of constant praise, alhamdulillah, and praising Allah. 
uh, divine qualities, so that we are infused with the divine qualities. Consummation, alhamdulillah, well, that's a very powerful word. So that's union and, and divine union, and almost like the divine lovemaking with Allah of the soul. And supreme delight, supreme delight, mashallah. The name invoked by the pure soul is the noble name Kahar. Ya Kahar. The, the, uh, it's translated here as triumphant, but it's, I would also say it's like almost the one that extinguishes anything other than itself or completely, um, I mean, dominates is, doesn't sound like the right word. I think it more has to do with it is the all-victorious one over everything, and there is nothing other than the one. Alhamdulillah. So let's just have that moment of, of silence. And um, I wanted to read to you from Effendi. On the lover. The lover should have the book of Allah in one hand. So again, this is guidance for the caretaking of our soul. And the sunnah of Allah's messenger in the other on his head, on her head, on their head, let's use the day, the crown of faith, on their back, the garment of the sacred law, in their eye, attentiveness, on their tongue, divine remembrance, around their waist, the belt of service to humanity, in their heart, kindness and compassion toward creatures, as well as love, affection, and, and awe of Allah. In their legs and feet, a readiness to serve. In their hands, wisdom and helpfulness. Their ear should, should ever be attuned to the words of truth. They should reflect upon the transitory nature of this world and the permanence of the hereafter, and should always be prepared for the journey to the eternal realm. Amin. Alhamdulillah. Al-Fatiha. Bisuri Janabi Hazreti Pir. Allahumma sayyana Sayyidina Muhammad wa lali Sayyidina Muhammad wa sabbi wa sallam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbin alimin. Rahman Rahim, Maniki Omidin, Iyak and Abudu, Iyak and Asta in Ihdina Sarat or Mustakim, Sarat and Edina Lamta Alehim, Guidum Magdubi Alehim, Waladon in Amin, Amin, Amin. Who?